Hi. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Bianca Crouch. I'm with Talent Direct Agency. I've been doing this for 18 years. Um, I'm also the South Florida branch co-chair for women in film and television. We are, as of this year, we always say we because my sister and I are we one person. <laughs> Um, we are board members as of 2024, um, and then I'm also the social chair for Film Florida and for South Florida. So we create events for the entertainment community for Film Florida as well. That's a lot of things. <laughs> That's a lot of things. <laughs> Super fun. Very intertwined. You're listening to Miami Film Labs, Cool Call 305. Cool Call 305, making a living as a filmmaker. So what made, you're obviously very intertwined in the film industry. What made you choose to come into the film industry and why particularly um, as a talent agent? Sure. Um, so I actually started in the entertainment industry as a talent. Um, so I was scouted. I can't remember if I was 16, 17, 18, some, somewhere in that, in that. And it wasn't really something that I gravitated towards at all for um, when I first experienced the industry. Um, it felt very transactional. OK, what is it? How much do I get paid? So it wasn't like when those things where I wanted to grow into it or learn from it or learn more about it. It was literally a paycheck. Um, as I then continued to grow in the industry, learn more about it, I moved down to South Florida from the Midwest. I'm originally from Germany, but um, spent uh, my college years up there and then worked for Fox Television. That's a different version than what you see today. <laughs> so it was my only ever like real job. Um, but um, moved down to South Florida and then realized that this is like a real industry. And I noticed that the industry was lacking a lot of information. So when, you know, when um, I transitioned from the talent side to the agency side, one, one of the big reasons I did that is because I felt like I could have gotten so much further if I would have had some form of education no, or support. what this all works. <laughs> what this all, how this all works. And actually, you know, I think that's kind of um, an agency's job is to do that as you take on talent is to make sure that they're prepared. It's not your responsibility to prepare them, but to let them know that they need to be prepared and then they can figure out the steps. So what was the that first big thing that you wished you had known when you were talent? Um, if you're 5'10 and you're, <laughs> you're more model-esque at the time, not anymore now, it was like 30 years ago. Um, don't bring a comp card to a film casting. Bring a headshot because I feel like, especially in Florida, a lot of models usually are not necessarily actors, and it's not even fair to send a model unless the role is that of a model. Yeah, and if you send a comp card, everyone thinks you're a model, not you're an actor. You're yeah. your time. You might as well turn around and go back home. I wish I would have known that because I think that would have saved me about 150 auditions. You know, so when you when you when you think of it, so I think it was just it's um, being of of service kind of to the industry too, or being of service to actors and as, as well as talent as models um, and really educating. And that's what we do a lot now, which we're really proud of. And I think that's why I'm also part of all these other organizations because it's such a core, it's the core of what we believe this should be like. Yeah. And it's, it's a industry that unless you're in it, it's hard to learn about it. Um, so having people and organizations that kind of help people figure out how to navigate this, I think is so important because everyone is so secretive about what they do and how they do it that it's it's really hard to figure out how badly you're screwing up yeah 100 percent. and i feel like there, there's a lack of information sharing but when you go to some of the markets like um we had an office in atlanta for five years and when you go to a developed market like that that under where it's still a young market but very developed they know what they have everybody's involved Every casting director, producer director, whatever they are, they show up, you know, for the GPP or like all the networking events or like, they actually they show up all the time because they know what they have within their state line is very special. And everybody's aware and everybody pitches in to keep that, keep feeding the machine. Do you feel like we don't do that in Florida yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> do I think that there are groups of people now working on this? Yes. Do I like am I really excited about what's happening in Florida? Yes. But do I think that was here five years ago? No. What's the biggest change you've seen in the last couple of years? Because I, I agree, uh, even before the pandemic, but especially since the pandemic, like the landscape has changed for us mm -hmm. incredibly. Well, I think um, that's a, that's actually for me, that would be like a really big thing to unpack. But like, just <laughs> to focus on a couple of things, I think organizations like yours, groups like yours that are that are coming in and um trying to, I feel like almost, I don't want to say standardized because that sounds so boring, but like to really educate standardize this is what it should be like this is this is what we can do here this is the kind of community that we can build and i've seen a lot um, since the pandemic especially a few little pods of these groups come in which i love 
I think if we can all, you know, which I think most of us are working together, but I think if everybody can really make it an ultimate goal that we want to bring business to Florida, we want to have money to do these things. We have a huge brain drain. We have the most um, film schools on the, on the film side of it, on the production side of it, and I think in any state. Yeah. I think that was the number I heard the other day. So why are we letting, you know, those people, I mean, we have the, um, what is it called, the bright... I think the scholarship program that we have here, uh, Bright, Bright, Bright Futures. Bright, Bright Futures. Bright yeah. Futures. So you can use that to go to film school, and then you know 100% you're going to exit the market. Heck, why? That doesn't even make any sense to have. And yet I went to film school outside of Miami and came and back because <laughs> uh, I wanted to work here. Um, we want to work where we live. We yeah. love it here, right? So we want to bring this stuff in. So I think as long as, as uh, all these little communities start working together, which I think that's already happening. It's just... How can we make it the most productive so that this happens two years from now or, or this year instead of 10 years from now? Yeah. And do you think the key is to bring outside money or to get the money that's already in our community invested in the work that we're doing? Like, I will take all money. <laughs> <laughs> You're, but, not yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But I think that with the tech boom in Miami, there's a, there are, there's a lot of money here and there are a lot of I know a lot of tech entrepreneurs that have done well with their first or second or third, you know, uh, business like sale that all would like to be executive producers. But, you know, it's, I think, a lot more attractive still right now doing it in L.A. or doing it even in Atlanta because of the star power that you can bring in. And I think that is a little bit of what we are missing. But then if the money's there, we can we can build that. Yeah, it's that catch-22 where, like, you need money to make products that are good enough that attract people that want to give you money. But unless you have the big star already, you're not getting the It's Yeah, it's it's a hard place we find ourselves in where there is this clout. There is a lot of talent here, but they're not doing with the big stars. That is what tends to attract money. Yeah. Um, but Miami itself is such a star, not only in our productions, but within the world community. Like, Miami is cool. Where else um, would you want to be? Exactly. <laughs> At least that's how I think it. I think we need to be better about marketing that part of it going, you know, you don't necessarily support me as an artist, support being a cool thing coming out of this cool place. It's a community and it's uh, for, I mean, I'm, I'm on the agent side, so obviously, you know, we want to make money for the agency, but I would rather share a project with five other people and make sure that that client comes back and they have an amazing experience than trying to do something on my own, for example, or, you know, I just, I feel like the collaboration of it all is what's, is what's so important because it is anytime that somebody has a positive experience in Florida, they'll tell somebody about it. Every time they have a crappy experience in Florida, they will tell 10 people about it. And that's just <laughs> how it works. So we just all need to, you know, get our heads out of the sand a little bit, which I know that's, <laughs> I know you have. But, no, uh, I, I, I like think it's true. And I think we need to be louder about our successes and less loud. Like we're, we're the number one people who gripe about our own things yeah. and we need to uh, do a little less yeah, of that. And celebrate it. Yeah. And let's say like, if we're the most diverse, we have the most beautiful backdrops. I mean, you can, I don't think there's anything that you couldn't do in Florida. It's oh, I've, we've shot California here. We've yeah. shot New York here. We, we, yeah. Unlike other places, we, we really have the architecture and the landscapes yeah. that really could be anything, which is, um, more like reason neutral. more people should yeah. be here yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and some, well yeah I mean we're very specific in some places and very adaptable in others and um, yeah as someone who worked in locations for a long time we we found anything here 100% and I think now with um, some of the like the hopefully the new studio that's going into Broward I mean I think that we we can't compete um, but again I think um, I think that this feeling of community I think is what's going to drive us to the next thing and it really and money <laughs> yeah, and money well I, yeah community drives money and money drives community and so it, yeah we, we're working both ends here uh, so what kind of projects are you getting now like what are you sending clients on mostly is it commercials is it Spanish language stuff what, what is it um so I would say for Florida in general obviously the strike just ended so it's a little bit hard to so first we have a pandemic, then we have a post-pandemic uh, push that where we just get a lot of projects, right? Such a big boom. Yeah, yeah. it was such a, it was amazing. And then last year, I think um, you could see mm. that a lot of more indie films were coming to Florida um, than we've had seen in a while. Uh, projects that pay. Um, then obviously with the SAC strike, that was almost a half a year of no film projects. Um, I would say for our talent group, it's still, I mean, it's a lot commercial. 
we do have a dedicated film division um, because we had an office. We had an office in Atlanta until March of 2020. Um, we do we do keep our film clients there, so we do push out quite a bit, and we do a book. Um, it's been challenging just because um, we're submitting talent into incentive-driven states, so we're already swimming uphill because they're not local, but then they're also not uh, residents of that state. So obviously, if you're an incentive-driven state, you probably will pick a, a local person over. So you have to just be better and come across better and tape better <laughs> and, you know, um, just work a little harder than maybe somebody who would have to, who would be local to Atlanta, for example. But it's not impossible. And I think post-pandemic casting directors are way more open to out-of-state talent. Where before that, um, it was a lot higher local, whatnot. But now we're, we're pushing yeah. a lot of people. We had a lot of people shoot for Disney Plus in Mexico um, that were on six or eight week contracts. Um, we had a lot, quite a few talent that are um, booking anywhere in the Southeast to New York to LA. So that is definitely there. And if we, if somebody is qualified enough to be pushed out that way, then we'll do it. But if somebody's maybe a year in, uh, it's, it's I'm not going to submit them to LA unless there's just really the right fit or just, I mean, an extreme amount of talent. So where do you go to find talent? Where are you finding most of your that talent, uh, so kind of all over the place. Um, I think we've been around for, um, for so long that we do get a lot of referrals. Um, we very rarely now take new talent um, that has no experience. So uh, ideally, referral comes from an acting coach, casting director, um, maybe somebody who's already with our agency. They all know that we keep a tight roster. So we usually don't get a friend of a friend of a friend submitted as a referral. Um, and then uh, I do quite a bit of scouting now, too. So I go to all the different scouting events. Um, I just, I think I was in Atlanta uh, last month and then a couple of weeks before I was in the Bahamas. So we look at talent anywhere. So you can, they, they can submit to the website or um, referral or from scouting. So we don't do any outbound grabbing of talent. Nice. So I won't go on your Instagram and like <laughs> try to recruit someone because I do, um, we're exclusive. So that's a little bit different from most of the agencies in Florida. And we do respect um, talent agent relationships. So I don't, crap talent and why did you guys choose to go exclusive when most of the agents here don't because i had absolutely no interest in having thousands of people on my roster i want to have real relationships with qualified people that want to do this for a living so whether this is their full-time or part-time we're okay with that as long as they treat it like a full-time job and it, which is what it does it's super competitive it's a, a, a lot of rejection um, but also a lot of opportunity to to really make a living from this. And we hear all the time that in Florida, you can make a living. We have a lot of talent that make a living from this. But you have to really be good at what you do. And those are the kind of people I want to work with. How much would you say are making a living? Because I, I agree, I, especially for acting. There, I mean, it's known for most of the industry that it's hard to make a living as an actor. But in a small market like South Florida, it's extra hard. It's extra hard. Well, I mean, make a living where I would say if they're working part time, which what this is for most people, um, I, have a, I mean, it could be anywhere from 50,000 up. I mean, I don't think I don't think a mother of two can work, live on that. So that's unrealistic. I think for the time put into it, I think there are a lot of people who are making a decent living here. Mm -hmm. But two, two, six digits, yeah. 150, 200,000, there are those people that make that here. This episode is sponsored by Unique Producer Service is South Florida's premier grip and lighting house. In business over 50 years, they have the experience to help you along the way, whether this is your first rental or your hundredth. If you need to come test out lights before you shoot, need equipment delivered, or you need a full crew, Unique has got you covered. You can visit their website at uniqueproducers.com or call them at 305-681-7627. Nestled between Miami and the Florida Keys lies an enchanted and tranquil estate. Palm Lodge House and Tropical Garden is a historic two-acre property from 1912. Its old Florida-inspired decor is intended to transport you back over 100 years with old world charm everywhere you look. The spacious two-story, three-bedroom house features an expansive porch, a high-ceiling foyer, a grand piano, and an outdoor living room, and is surrounded by lush tropical gardens with seashell walkways throughout. And it is the perfect place for your next shoot or event. So what is next for your agency? So for 2024, we're actually super excited um, just because obviously, we, like we said, we just got the um, WIFT board seat. So we're excited about that. Um, for us um, this year, we want to get to know everyone in our community. 
I mean, we've been doing this for a few years already anyway, through WIFT and through Film Florida, but I want to know every organization in Florida. I want to know every group of people who are doing things. I want to collaborate. I want to create amazing events. I want to create opportunities for the talent to work and stay here. Um, and it sounds like a lot, but it's really not a lot because it all goes together. And then for us, uh, we're building out our um, speaker board as well. So that's a new board. We kind of knew old. We've had it before. We've had a big hosting board for a long time. And we had we work with a lot of companies that would hire our talent to basically uh, walk walk their walk through their event or uh, host a conference or whatever it may be. So we're going to build that out. But our main focal point this year is literally the community. And it has been like that already for a couple of years, but this year we're going to tie it all together <laughs> because we had to, we've been holding those positions for about 18 months now. So it was, and it was post pandemic. So it really took a minute to get everything going because I think memberships is what has dropped for every organization yeah. post pandemic. So we started with very little and we've created some really cool things. And, and then, I think both those organizations have, um, especially, I mean, WIFT in South Florida really wasn't doing much for a while and you guys have really started doing a lot more events and started even know about stuff. It. Yeah. I didn't even know about it before. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I knew I knew it existed, but I didn't, I'd never heard of them doing very yeah. much down here. So it's nice to see um, that coming back up and, and doing that. And have, do you find that organizations like WIF that are women specific are still very much needed? Is there still that divide? 100%. I think um, I've made quite a few really good friends to WIF. Um, and then also uh, we've obviously, um, worked with the, the, the people that we've met through there, um, usually on the production, on the production side. Um, I do think so. I think there's a lot of conversation that still needs to be had on the women in film side anyway. Um, and I feel like the world is more open now to it than ever before. So let's take advantage of it. But I do feel, hey, listen, I mean, you know, I've, I have three children. I mean, all my all my clients, I think, have heard all my children scream on the phone because I never <laughs> took off work. So I, I just like every time I, I literally had the laptop in the uh, delivery room with me with every single child kept on working. And I, I would tell them, hey, you know what? It's OK. I, you can talk right now, but they're screaming. I'll hear you. I'll take everything <laughs> down. I'll work on it. No problem. And the fact that they all worked with me so much and women still feel that this is not something that's accessible to them to have these kind of relationships while having small children, I think there there's still a lot of conversation that needs to be had to make our industry um, make it feel like a safe space for oh. for you to be a mom, to have children, and that you're going to be working just as much because it is 14 hour days. We all know this. Yeah, but it's it's finding a way to do that that is flexible. I mean, Miami Film Lab, amongst many of the reasons it exists, is because I was pregnant and needed to figure out how to not be on someone else's set for 80 hours and not have the ability to you know, go pick up my kid or do something. And luckily, because of the pandemic, I did two huge jobs from my house with my kids screaming yeah. and bottle in one hand, computer in the yeah. other. But it's not, it is hard to convince other people that, that you can still do your job and take care of your kids um, because there aren't a lot of people with families in the film industry, yeah. at least compared to other industries. It, it's hard. It's hard mm -hmm. to work these hours and um, I mean, we're people who want to stay locally, but most people travel a lot when they work production and that's hard to do with little kids. 100% hard to do, but I think it just needs to be, still needs to be talked about so that we can have everybody in the in the marketplace as you choose to be. I mean, if somebody wants to take off for three months, great. If that's, you know, if that's, if that's accessible, great. But we know for a lot of our actors, for example, it's not an option. So we have that conversation a lot more now than we've ever had it before. And it's, crazy when you actually approach uh, clients with this information, how much more flexible they become as opposed to saying, oh, no, sorry, not available. Yeah, well, she could be, but it's actually three hours. Would that be OK? Can we get this done? Well, can she do this? Yes, she can. And then and then we get around around it that way. But anyway, I just feel like yeah. it's still a conversation that needs to be had. Yeah. And I think especially as women, I think dads, too, but mostly women, you're you think that if you mention your kid and that you need accommodations for your family, that immediately they will think less of your yeah. talent and abilities. And sometimes that is true, um, but sometimes they're willing to work with you and being um, as moms who employ people, yeah. being more open to having those conversations, I think is really important. Um, but as moms be like, no, this is what I need. And if you like it, great. If not, I will go find another job. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, that, exactly. As long as it happens within reason. And I mean, yeah. I employ a team of moms, everybody except for one person is a mom on my team. And they're the hardest working, they multitask. I can reach them anytime. Our clients can reach us anytime. Like it's just, that's not ever been an issue. 
but we've had to set it up in a way where that could work for everyone. And we could, we did set it up and it was, and it's successful. And if so. I'm not wrong, that's literally how your sister became part of this. Yes. Is <laughs> you were having one of your kids yes. and needed yes. the help. So well, that's great. Yeah, so yeah. Moved to, she moved, so first my mom moved here and then my sister, she's our uh, web manager and our payroll person. And then uh, my sister moved here. Yeah. When I had my, my third child. So it's become a family affair. Yes, very it. much so. <laughs> <laughs> Does that, do you find that that helps the work to be working with family and people you um, trust like that? Yes. Well, I mean, we have one, we have one person has been with us for on and off for 12 years. She had a couple of kids in the middle too. And then my mom's obviously been there for like, I think about 14 years or 15 years. My sister joined in 2016. And then we have another agent that came with us, came over in 2019. Um, and I, I trust everyone. I mean, for, listen, I have a great team. But it's, it's incredible you've been able to grow such a big team, given that the industry hasn't been what it was the last few years. So it's really, congratulations. That's Thank incredible. You. Yeah, yeah, we did. We focused on, we like I said, we focused on our, I rep about 650 people. So that's not a lot. It might even be a little bit less. That sounds like a lot It sounds <laughs> a lot, a lot to because do, yeah. it's commercial. If it's, if we were in LA or even Atlanta, it would, it would be a lot less. But if, but that's because the, um, the market's so different. Because there's so much commercial here, I do have to have a good amount of people on or it's 80% commercial work. So um, they when they're looking for a specific type or like sometimes if it's a repeat client and they've already gone through so many people and they can't use the same face again, and we, we have to constantly, you know, come up with good new quality talent. Um, that's that. But I feel like um, it's actually a really good number for us. And that's ages five to 85, I think, is our most mature person. Commercial is such a big term. Like what are the kinds of commercials that are being made here? Is it big, huge $2 million shoots? Is it small production companies doing, you know, little things for little companies or is it the, you know, huge brands, big celebrity I kind of projects? All of the above. So I think in the winter, obviously you have your regular, we just did a bunch of Super Bowl commercials. So that's, you have your like kind of season. So a lot of cruise ship, they usually do all at the same time. Uh, insurance, I have a ton of insurance commercials. So I think those are like the big ones. That's where you make a lot of money. And then we have a lot of infomercial companies, um, smaller production companies that just shoot, you know, four or five times a week. And those are actually, I love working with those because we literally just make, I make a package with talent that would be appropriate for the job rate and what I know what they're kind of looking for. And I send them a package and they just look on that and that's it. And you're done. And you're done. Oh, that's But it's so far to curate this group. Yeah. <laughs> but now that, that works really well. And it could be anything from asking on TV to just various infomercial um, companies. We have a, the company that does a lot of the Target commercials, the seasonal commercials. They're out of, um, they're not too far from our office. So those are the people that kind of keep you busy throughout the year. And then your bigger commercial projects, obviously. And are the bigger, especially the bigger commercial projects coming with some talent and then filling in the roster, like bigger names, or are they mostly casting here in South um, Florida? So both. So sometimes we get a little frustrated because we'll see a major project come here and then they'll book um, some crew here, some extras, maybe a talent, but usually that's on a replacement and then bring in the talent from LA or sometimes New York or whatever. That's a, that gets a little frustrating for us because then I look at them, I'm like, we could do that. And it wasn't really name power. But I think it's just that some of these production companies, when they come in from out of town, they just bring the people with them that they're already comfortable working with. But I do feel like a lot of the stuff that I see is utilizing local talent or may just fly one or two people in from out of town. And do you think there's a way to help, especially companies that are coming in from outside of Florida, have more respect for our talent and not feel like they need to bring in other talent? Like, what is that going to take? You just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> this is exactly why we do what we do. Yeah. Because we hear that all the time, that we're this like loose market, like anything goes, people aren't really qualified. That's what we hear. That's what I hear. Every time I go on a scouting trip, anytime I go anywhere and meet somebody from, from a um, bigger market, that's exactly what I hear. Or I hear from people who have had that experience here. And that is exactly what we want to combat. I mean, that's literally why we went to exclusive for the most part. We want to work with quality people, put Florida on the map. We are a professional state. We have tons of amazing people that do work here. Yeah, here, it's here. just, it's frustrating that it's it's become so hard to translate that outside of here. Like, I do a lot of the big budget stuff that comes to town. Like, to me, I don't see a difference between the crew that comes and the crew that's here. A little in demeanor, but not in talent and not in ability. Yeah. And on screen, you can't tell the difference yeah. between what was our crew and what was their crew. And yet we're no matter how great those projects are, we can't convince them otherwise. So 
Is there anything other than plowing through and continuing to do good work? Is there anything else? That- I think we need to show up everywhere. I think that um, what we talked about earlier was community. Um, and I want, I guess maybe I can mention it. So um, there's a really, do you remember a little book? Mm-hmm. So we, we used to get the printouts from them or like we, the print, the printer books. So I would order them and then I'd go through and like try to contact people and like, hey, you know, we have talent, blah, blah, blah. But um, so Connections, which is their conference is back. Um, they do a really great job, very well curated group of people. Um, I've been to one here, I've been to the one in Atlanta and just made, made a ton of new contacts. And I'm kind of advertising it now too, because I mean, they're going to be here. Um, I think it's Soon. February yeah. 15th. I think it's the conference here in Miami. So if you haven't signed up, go. It was really, really good to to talk to everyone there last time. But again, nobody knew about it. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, I've been contacted by them a couple times and I'm just like, wasn't sure that they were as legit as they seem. So yeah. it's good to know no, that that's it's a great, great thing. It's a great organization. Literally, I've gotten quite a bit of business out of it. Oh, fantastic. And also to learn a little bit, especially in this last Atlanta one, they had actually had a, had a panel. But that's the thing. Nobody knows about it. So I think it's the same thing when an out-of-state uh, producer, for example, comes into Florida. Where is our, like, I know that, I mean, now we know we have some aggregators of information, but like, and you can get it by county, but like, but even the aggregator, it's hard to know what is quality. Yeah, what's quality. Like anyone can sign up for those. Yeah. Um, so that's something we want to long term want to work on is how do we vouch for the people working in town? Again, you know, we don't want to be gatekeepers to say you can't work with those people. But we also want to be like, these are the best of the best in town. Yeah. If you're really looking for talent like these are and find ways to, you know, as people work more, make sure we're meeting everyone that's working and figuring out who are the most talented and be like them them you should hire them you should give them funding their films are going to be fantastic um and yeah it's it's a challenge because there are so many people working here we think that we're a small town but we're not and we do tend to be like it's six degrees of, of my yeah. crew member i think it's still, like two degrees yeah here, i guess <laughs> but you can reach everyone pretty quickly but you don't necessarily know everyone or know enough to really say this is what they're really great at you should hire them um and there's also lots of great people you should hire so how do we get more people to know this and be more make sure that they're calling this guy and not maybe that one that has only done two things and then you have you have you know who's engaged you know what they're doing you know who who you work with all the time and that's who you're going to recommend yeah 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 so call call us if you need crew (laughs) Or call it talent direct. Uh, don't necessarily just Google people because um, they're not. Th- sometimes the ones with the best website make the be- worst work and the ones with the worst presence um, that most people can find it easily aren't necessarily the best um, yeah, samples your, of our work. Yeah, yeah but, but also like call your local film commissioner's office. Like, I mean, every film commissioner, they all have their own um, directories, but you can always ask them who, who works a lot. Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, I think they, they're usually, I feel, I feel like all three offices in this tri-county area are very involved. They're active. I feel like you can get information from them. And they know us well. Yeah. We, yeah, we all interact with it. They're not just there to sign off on papers. They I know I see us, the they phone know who's working. more than I see my own best friends. <laughs> these days because of all the events. Like, yeah. and that's, <laughs> you know, those that come out to support the events and those are that are actively involved or those that will speak or host or create or whatever. Those are the people you want to work with because those are people who are doing more than anyone else in my opinion agreed so how can everyone find you online if they want to book you or work with you sure absolutely so we're on talentdirect.com um if you go on instagram we have our link tree up as well and i think it's talent direct agency also um and that's i mean that's it i think linkedin uh pinterest you can pretty much youtube you can find us everywhere we put a lot of content out on do's and don'ts upcoming events you can subscribe to our newsletter um that we just launched relaunched um as of this year that has um just like your guys's events um mm-hmm. we list all the local industry events in our newsletter and anybody can sign up for it it's free and we only um push out information once a month and that's kind of what we're planning to do in the future as well i love it well thank all you right. so much this was such a fun conversation thank you this episode is a production of Miami Film Lab, a nonprofit production company supporting local filmmakers as they work to make a living telling Miami stories. It was produced by Joe Terman and myself, Jen Orta Castellanos, and was recorded at Unicorn Fire Studios. Jed Royer at Royer Design made our logos. Our music is by Ola High. You can subscribe to Crew Call 305 on your preferred podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, leave a comment or review. 
If you want to support our work, you can make a tax-deductible donation at miamifilmlab.org. Thanks so much for listening.